Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I went to the art store today to pick up a, another watercolor palette. I lent my other one, which was exactly the same as this, to my boyfriend um, and he is enjoying it so much that he's just going to keep it. So I bought myself another one to fill up and set up with all my new watercolor paints. Uh, some of these you can see here have been well used and are almost empty and some of them I just bought today like this little tube of Winsor Newton Potter's Pink. So I thought maybe you guys would like to see my process of setting up this watercolor palette. I see a lot of different watercolor artists on YouTube doing this and I figure why not film it and you guys can hear a little bit about my thought process um, narrowing down my collection to the 20 little pans that are in here. I have about 30 tube watercolors here. This doesn't include any of my handmade watercolor pans. Those are in separate little travel palettes but these are the ones that I have tubes of, minus um, these two over here, which are some of the special Daniel Smith ones, um, Iridescent Electric Blue and Duochrome Arctic Fire, which are super cool, but they're not like that useful. So I am not going to include them in here. And I know that, so I just put them out to the side already. Um, here is my Mossery sketchbook. Uh, where I've just sort of laid out all of my colors just so I can see them painted out and dried and uh, figure out exactly what I want in this palette. So I think I'm going to clear off my table a little bit and we will start picking and choosing from my collection. Alright, so I think we'll just go down my little cheat sheet here in roughly color order. I know for sure that I'm going to want a cool red and a warm red, um, so I'll just line those up in here. I know some artists don't like to use toxic pigments, um, but I personally don't have a problem with it, uh, so I definitely am going to have a few cadmiums on here. Um, I'm going to go with also a warm yellow and a cool yellow, so Gamboge and Azo yellow, these are both from M. Graham. And I'm not going to include my orange because obviously you can just mix that. Mostly what I use my travel palettes for are uh, landscape painting, so I'm going to go a little bit more natural probably. Um, I likely won't include all of my purples and stuff like that, but I am going to include several different greens. Probably not all of them. Let's definitely take this Azo green because it's beautiful. Um, Serpentine Genuine, which I really like. I like how it um, sort of splits up when it dries. It goes to a nice um, green, but also a sort of warm, yellowy, brown tone. It's really beautiful. I think I'm going to take my Terra Verte uh, yellow shade. This is from Winsor & Newton. This is a very transparent color, like super transparent, um, but it's very soft and I want to use it more. I am also going to take my favorite Hooker's Green. This is a really dark pigmented green and I love it for shadows in foliage and stuff. It's just really rich and really pure green so you don't end up having to neutralize it with red to get it so dark. Um, so I like that a lot. And actually I might go all out and put my permanent sap green and my cascade green. So that's going to be one side. And we'll see if we can fit all my browns on the other side. Um, I probably do need all of these blues. Um, I don't really like cerulean blue, I'm going to be honest. It granulates a lot, which is not a look that I'm fond of. I'm more of a, an opaque artist, like a gouache artist, so that's probably where that's coming from. I just kind of get a little reflexively like, Ugh, when my blues start granulating. Payne's Gray for sure. I love Payne's Gray. Actually, I'm going to put that down at the bottom with sepia. Those are my darks. Five colors, and I have like a lot of colors left. So that's why I'm not sticking them in all at once. I'm going to have to make some changes as I go through. I really like this potter's pink, so I think I'm going to put that in there. And we always need 
some burnt sienna. That's a very important pigment. Go with one burnt umber. Put that down there. And one of my raw umbers. I have a regular raw umber and I have a German greenish raw umber, um, which I really like. I have a lot more of this, so I think we'll add that in. And then, yeah, my raw sienna. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out Prussian blue because I can make sort of a similar pigment with the Payne's Gray and the French Ultramarine. I mean, it's not got the same qualities as Prussian blue. I love Prussian blue, but that'll work for now. And I'll insert this quinacridone violet because it's a beautiful pigment. Um, I want to use it more often. And I think that will be good for now. And I'm going to, I like to stick my, my whites and my other colors like in different places. So I'm just going to squeak in an extra and put my buff titanium up there. So I think that this is making me happy. There's a ton of green on here, a lot of green, but um, I find that having tons of different pigments of green makes it so much more enjoyable to paint foliage and gearing up for spring I really want to get out and do way more plein air painting and film a ton of that for you guys it's my favorite thing to film outdoors and try to capture some of the animal interactions that I witness and some of the weather and just the beautiful scenery that we have here in Alberta Canada so lots of greens will be very helpful and I will squeeze these all out now and we'll see how it looks at the end. the palette all set up you can see that there are a lot of earth landscape type tones in my palette I go through those the fastest for sure but I do have my reds and yellows up here for when I need them I also put a little bit of extra Payne's Gray because I love Payne's Gray it's a nice and dense dark color um, it makes for a really good shortcut which when you're painting outside is sometimes just what you want rather than having to constantly mix a black and a blue pigment together there it is ready to go so I can't wait to take this out painting I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the background noise and the thought process and I will see you in whatever I upload next have a great day bye